Hi everyone, it's Heidi again. Today we are doing Denmark. Geography now. I am loving these videos. <laughs> I'm learning so much. And of course, as always, if there's anything that needs to be tweaked or any spelling corrections, things like that, definitely just put them in the comments to let me know. But overall, they're doing a freaking fantastic job. I love it. Um, if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Come see me on Twitch. I'm loving talking to you, talking to you guys live about this kind of stuff and just about random stuff in general. Um, we've learned a bit about Denmark, um, but let's see what else we we have to learn. I'm excited. Let's do this. Remember in the Angola episode, I mentioned how I went to Denmark one time and bought a sandwich that was $21? Well, this was that sandwich, and my reaction was like, $21? Oh, this better be the best sandwich I've ever had in my life. It probably you was. You got lucky. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's time to learn geography. No! no! Yeah, he, he'll probably mention something like this, but one of the reasons why I want to go to Denmark so badly is because they've had, for like a long, for a while, They'll have the number one restaurant rated in the entire world in Denmark. Um, I think it's Geranium at the moment, and it's my dream to go there. So I can just say that I've been to the best restaurant in the world. You know, how cool is that? That's quite an achievement. Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie, Legos, Vikings, and Roll Roll Mathlon. We got a lot to cover, so let's jump in. Oh. <laughs> Potato in the mouth. Ah, Denmark, the link between the rest of Europe and Scandinavia. So much to discuss. Denmark is classified as a Nordic country, hence located in the Northern European region, even though it's kind of like the southernmost state in the Nordics. Full disclaimer, ignore okay. Wikipedia. I'm gonna pronounce the location names in their proper Danish context. So here we go. Denmark is made of the Juland, not Jutland, peninsula that connects to Germany in the south, as well as 1,419 islands. Of those, only 443 are named and 74 are inhabited. With the largest oh, island cool. being Shelland, not Zealand, which is not to be confused with Dutch Zeeland, which is not to be confused with New Zealand, although they did get their I name- I can't take it! That's too much information! <laughs> it is connected to Foon Island, Thank you. not Finn <laughs> Island, by the Great Belt Bridge completed in 1998. The country is so divided cool. into five regions, the capital being Copenhagen, located on Shelland. Copenhagen is home to a myriad of historical sites, palaces, statues, residential units that are all- Oh yeah, we learned about the Little Mermaid actual statue. That was in there for like two seconds. So interesting, I didn't know that that existed before like a month ago. Awesome. The same height and style with pockets of colorful, quaint, cozy shops and cafes and dangerous bicycle lanes that you are not supposed to walk on. Now this is where things are gonna get <laughs> a little spiced up. And by spiced up, I mean freezing cold and covered in whale blubber. Denmark, for those of you who didn't know, is a kingdom, one of the last surviving ones in Europe and is currently under the headship of chain smoking Queen Margaret II. These I love her. I've learned a little bit about her and she seems so down to earth and so cool. <laughs> Still fall under Danish sovereignty and make up the massive Greenland Island and the Little Faroe Islands. Both of these places are radically different from mainland Denmark. For one, Greenland is primarily inhabited by native Inuit tribal peoples that live on the island and is 80% covered in ice year round. The Faroe Islands are a conglomeration wow, of 20-ish mystical cloudy windy islands that have this crazy looking lake that looks like it's about to spill over the cliffs into the ocean. These what? I have, wait, why can't I? Oh, why is that adjusting my, no. Uh. These two areas have their, hold on. There we go. That have this crazy looking lake that oh, looks wait. like it's about to spill over. That is so cool. I've never seen that before. That's freaking crazy. I love that. Anyway, yeah, beautiful. This is an absolutely beautiful Area. the cliffs into the ocean. These two areas have their own self-governing home rule, otherwise only depending on Denmark for military, justice, currency, and foreign affairs. Otherwise, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, historically, they did try to kind of create an empire by colonizing parts of the Caribbean, Ghana, India, and then in the Nicobar Islands and the Indian Ocean, but they kind of <laughs> ran out of money and ended up selling everything to other countries. Too bad, it would be awesome to see people in the Indian Ocean speaking Danish. Nonetheless, <laughs> mainland Denmark is kind of like a fast-moving economic machine. Let's talk about how. Okay. Is that because there are people there that speak Danish? I'm just, I, I didn't get that joke, probably because I just, I haven't learned about that yet, but I'm so curious about, I'm like, what was that? What was that smirk? <laughs> now when it comes to land makeup, Denmark is 
pretty flat. I mean, the highest point, Mullehoy, is only about 170 meters tall and it looks like this. Otherwise, only about 13% <laughs> of the country is forested, including the tree plantations, and the rest is pretty much used for agriculture that can produce enough food to feed about 15 million people. It's about three times the size of their entire population. Good for you, Denmark. But one thing Denmark yeah. is actually famous for growing is non-produce plants like grass, fodder, and Christmas trees. The highly sought after Danish Nordman fir has been classified as the Rolls Royce of Christmas trees. And really? every year investors from Germany, the Netherlands, and even the UK jump in at the end of November and grab whatever they can before it's gone. Now, one thing you need to know oh. is that like many other areas in the Nordic region, Denmark's weather can be quite dreary. First of all, Denmark is the only Nordic country that doesn't really get a lot of snow. Denmark is kind of like the mud pit located below the jet stream blocked by Norway and the UK. This means that even though it gets really cold, pressure systems rarely cause snow. This is also pretty I honestly would not mind that. Even though when you're in Denmark, I probably wouldn't be driving as much as I do, but at least here, because we drive so much and it's so car-based, I hate driving in the snow. It is the worst thing ever. You're just sliding all over the place. There are car crashes. It's so dangerous. And you have to scrape the ice off of your car. So honestly, I'd be okay with that. I would much prefer mud and rain over snow, in my opinion. It's very pretty hate living in it. <laughs> Pretty much why everybody dresses like a J. Crew fall fashion line model on the streets. If you're going to get wet and freezing, you may as well look good while doing it. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, pretty much the rest of Denmark is just rolling green plains with sandy beaches and quirky little islands that people like to hop over for camping trips in the summer. If we were going to talk Cute. about Greenland and the Faroe Islands, we would get a radically different story of mind-boggling, captivating cliffs, bluffs, sea stacks, glaciers, fissures, icebergs, and mountains. If you don't know what a Mulan is, it's not this, but <laughs> this. This Mulan is large enough to swallow a school bus. But we'll have to save that for another <laughs> video that'll come out in 9,374 years. In the mean- That's, I, I have a new fear. Uh, what in the heck was that? That <laughs> looks like it was going to just en envelop my soul. I just can't. That's terrifying, but pretty cool looking at the same time. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that. In the meantime, <laughs> let's talk about the people. So nice. <laughs> now this is gonna get really fun. Denmark's people are really unique in their cultural, historical, and postmodern upbringing. First of all, the country has about 5.7 million people and is one of the highest taxed countries in the world. About 89% of the country identifies as ethnically Danish, about 11% are others. Some of the largest groups in the other <laughs> category being the Polish, Germans, Turkish, Romanians, Iraqis, and Afghans. Now when it comes to- Where are the people in the US? I wonder, I wonder what percentage of people, you know, have migrated from the U.S. to, um, or emigrated? Anyway, have moved to Denmark from the U.S. I wonder. I thought it would be maybe more, but I guess not. The Danish culture, there's a lot behind it, but in a nutshell, Vikings. Vikings pretty much had their start in what is now present-day Denmark and whom pretty much dominated all of the Nordic regions as far as New Finland in Canada to Estonia. Which is why most of the Nordic states and regions can pretty much understand each other when they talk. Danes, Swedes, Norwegians, and Icelanders can generally understand each other as they have the same basic linguistic structure. Sure, there are subtle discrepancies, but overall they can kind of get by conversationally. <laughs> Granted, there's a saying. <laughs> Poor Finland. <laughs> they try. I love it. Norwegian and Swedish languages sound like dancing fairies, whereas the Danish language sounds like a dude with a potato in his mouth. By the way, anybody who wants to learn Danish, full disclosure, it's gonna suck. The J makes the Y sound, the Y makes the U sound, the V makes a W sound, the R makes a R sound, the H is silent half the time. A ton of the letters are never even used and don't even get started on A, U, and O. Danish language is insane. <laughs> I still don't understand any of it. Even when I, I've, I've tried to put in Google Translate and try to, you know, listen to the pronunciation, maybe not Google Translate, but um, listen to the pronunciation of some Danish words, and I can't even repeat it. Even when I'm listening to it, I'm like, how do you pronounce, like, how do you create that sound? 
and have it come out of your mouth. It's insane. Super cool sounding, but yeah, I would have a hard time learning it. <laughs> I kind of discovered a little trick though when I went to Denmark. When speaking Danish, all you really have to do is kind of like pronounce the first part of the word that you think makes a sound and then just kind of like give up on the rest of the word. For example, Copenhagen, Nürburgring, Lufstrain. I'm literally just listing <laughs> names of places in Copenhagen that I've been to. Honestly though, you really won't have much of a problem getting around if you speak English. Over 80% of the entire country, mostly the younger generation, speaks proficient English to the point where they don't even need subtitles when watching American TV shows and movies. Oh. That's so nice to know, honestly. Uh, that's that's one of the reasons why I'm I'm I would like to visit Denmark because I know that I could probably get around okay without speaking Danish because that language intimidates me for sure. But do you guys, especially people in the chat who are Danish, do you agree with the whole potato thing? Because I've heard that so many times. And I know that it's used to kind of make fun of the, the Danish language. Um, but do you guys kind of agree? You're just like, yeah, it's kind of true. Or are you like, no, no, that's that's just making fun of us. I'm just curious because I, I think it's so funny. Um, but at the same time, I don't know. I'm wondering what your, what the Danish thoughts are on that. <laughs> also, keep in mind, Greenland has its own language that is completely unintelligible as it's an Inuit language closer to the indigenous Inuktitut and Yupik languages found in Canada and Alaska. And Faroese cool. is pretty hard for most Danish people to grasp as it actually has more words rooted in the ancient Norse language and it's actually more intelligible to Icelandic. Back to culture though, Denmark has definitely left its mark, whether it's notable figures like author Hans Christian Andersen, philosopher Søren Kierkegaard, or whether- Can you pronounce his name? That's actually how you pronounce his name. Wow. It's not Søren Kierkegaard. Oh it's, or whether it be the invention of the loudspeaker or Legos or their love of handball, mm. their impeccable architecture, love of cuisine. Noma in Copenhagen, by the way, being voted the best restaurant in the world with plates that feature live ants and moss. If you, you know, what's really sad is that Noma is actually closing down at the end of 2024. And for the last two years or so, it has not been on the, the top number one spot anymore. It's geranium now. And I wonder if I wonder what came first? Are they closing down so they're not trying as hard? Or are they failing and so they're closing down because of it? I just, I don't know why or what the reason is at all, but I was like trying to get there. I was like, okay, we're going to go to Noma, but now I've kind of switched to Geranium instead because um, it's no longer the top restaurant. Very sad. It looks crazy to go to. So... Kind of sad about that. Really gonna get a feel for Danish culture though. You kind of have to know about Janteloten and Hygge. The funny thing is, Danes are kind of brought up in a social mindset that is kind of integrated into their subconscious known as Janteloten, which kind of translates to something like, you are not better than the crowd, which I know sounds kind of depressing, but it's really trying to instill a sense of equality and communal cooperation. Hygge translates to something like, spend good times with friends and family, and it's like a cozy thing. Of course, Denmark is known for being ranked one of the happiest overall countries, even though they are also kind of one of the highest ranked consumers of antidepressants as well. But hey, they still pull off everyday life looking oh so good, even if it's during one of those really loud annual emergency drills. Okay, Christine, explain what's happening right now. Denmark is testing the sirens for uh, so loud. We're being attacked by the Germans again. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm really, really scared right now. Let's run to the security basement. <laughs> the security basement. The Germans basement. are coming. Speaking of... That guy is my favorite person. That's so funny. <laughs> um, I wonder how they let the people know when it's just uh, a test. Do they have it like on the speaker? Does it say this is just a test and then it runs the siren? Or do you just have to like figure out if it's a test or not? Because I know that sometimes that will happen like with schools or things like that when there's like a fire alarm, you know, um, drill a fire drill or things like that most of the time it's just kind of word of mouth or the teachers will say okay today we're going to have a fire drill so if that doesn't get across to somebody someone could get really confused and i'm just wondering how they manage that like having it be such a like a wide range i guess where it's like going across the whole city um i'm just wondering does anybody know germans <laughs> sorry <laughs> The Germans are coming! Speaking of Germans. <laughs> oh, that's so 
good. Now, we all know that one person we're all kind of jealous of because they're kind of rich, well-adjusted, and have a ton of friends, and they're like kind of good-looking. Well, that's Norway. Denmark is a little bit rockier. No, but seriously, for such a small nation, Denmark has a huge entourage of friends, and it's almost kind of hard for anyone in the world to dismiss them at a party. As a founding member of the EU and NATO, Denmark has had roots planted in diplomacy for decades. First off, Denmark generally gets along with Germany. Business between the Germans is a hugely integral part of their economy, and Denmark acts like the gateway to Scandinavia for them and the rest of Europe. The US and the UK are incredibly close, as both tangible and cultural imports have been established for centuries. For a while, the Danes even took over parts of the UK, which is why to this day the English language still retains hundreds of Old Norse-derived words like leg, dog, and window. The closest friends, though, would have to be the Nordic countries, Finland, Sweden, Norway, and Iceland. These four are, without a doubt, Denmark's closest friends, even though Sweden and them have kind of had more wars and battles historically than any other two states in the world. They've moved on and grown up. Out of that, that's BFFs for you, you know? You all have your fights. <laughs> the Nordic countries, though, Norway would probably be considered their best friends. Danes are obsessed with Norwegians and often consider Norway the girlfriend they took away from Sweden. In conclusion, Denmark is the rich, rainy rascal that always seems to show up on time for every party, but somehow gets all his work done in an organized, efficient manner. Stay tuned, Djibouti is nice. coming up next. Is that how you pronounce it, Djibouti? I want to watch that one just for the name. That That's great. I, I mean, I'm not going to say why. I like it, though. Okay, <laughs> so I've met a lot of wonderful Danish people. Um, I was already, um, you know, working with and good friends with um, someone from Denmark before I even started reacting to things on, on YouTube. And so um, I have a special place in my heart for, for the Danes. Um, but, yeah. That was pretty cool. I loved watching this one and actually kind of knowing a couple of things. That made me feel good. That makes me think, okay, I'm actually learning something, you know, and I'm retaining memory um, from watching these videos. I've loved this journey so far. And honestly, we're just getting started. So I'm really excited to learn about more countries, learning about more things in the world, and as well as, you know, what's going on in the U.S. too sometimes. I know that there's still... A lot that I probably don't know about what's going on here. But um, if you like the video, definitely like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks, you guys. Bye.